from the office and you have all these colors and you can move them around and create forms. It became really very fun. And it was the beginning of computer art. So computers were really slow, but it was fast for what we knew at the time. So to wait for a day or two for a practical to be generated was just awesome. You know? <laughs> I mean, at the time, it was the best we ever knew. And uh, well, we generated all those fractals, and then we figured to show them, and we put them on T-shirts. We made a mural that we took to a show in New York. That was all very, very cool, a computer art show in New York City. And uh, we made it as much noise as we could. We made a living out of the, the T-shirts for a while, you know, doing conventions, the Macworld conventions, and the uh, National Science Teachers Association, National Convention of Teachers of Math. Everybody was interested in fractals at the time, took interest in our t-shirts, so we made the official t-shirts for a bunch of those guys, and it was great fun, and that's what we did for a while. So now, after 32 years, I uh, go upon myself to animate the fractals by exploring the, the, the spectrum around the, the, the fractals. So I do chromatic animations. I move the spectrum around and explore them. I do that with my paintings as well, not just with the fractals. And it's incredible amount of fun, and it's very creative because it allows you really great latitude to paint. Because you're really painting in that space, and uh, it's fantastic what you can accomplish. It's very rewarding, the, the experience. Uh, okay, now I need a glass of water. Who has a question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's really interesting, the fact that you said it took about one or two days to generate um, each fractal. That's, um, yeah, that must have been, did you, you know, when you were creating it, obviously, you know, you put in the formulas for how you want the fractals to be, but, um, you know, did you know how it would turn out, or was it like one or two days of, like, waiting to see? Um, it was very much, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, that's very insightful. It was very much waiting to see if you went deep into the, the formation, if you were, uh, uh, you, you, yes, the bottom line is yes, you really had no idea, you had an idea of what it would happen, I mean, you, you get a nose for these things, and you know what to follow, for example, it was great fun seeing some artists at the time would eliminate uh, 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 pixels that were weird or they didn't look so good. I remember once we had a conversation with a nice fellow, it was, it was fun. And then we're comparing my approach. When I found some, some pixel that was strange, I would dive into it because that's where the fun stuff was. Half of what we're seeing these days in these old fractals comes from very strange places that look like the formations. And that's where the action was. That's where new forms emerged. But when you click into one of those places, you have no idea what is going to come out. So your question is terrific. And you really waited for 24, 48 hours for a surprise. Now, once you get the surprise, once you get the fractal generator, then now you have a mathematical space where you can manipulate what the computer will show as a two-dimensional representation. For example, let's say that all this area, we're going to call it black, all Every pixel on the screen has a value in the algorithm of the Mandelbrot set. After that has been calculated, you assign values to each latitude of, 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 of the spectrum, of, of, you know, between this and that, make it red, between this and that, make it blue, and if, if, if the colors start changing, the areas start changing. And if you get really interested in it, you can use it as a artistic expression because you can really make fractals that look really, really interesting. So I got totally caught into that, and I still am. <laughs> and uh, it's just fantastic, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's awesome. It sounds like you, know, you had a good time really experimenting and refining, um, you know, I think a, a bit more so than, um, you know, traditional mediums, would you say? It allowed you to really sort of explore a lot? Yeah, yeah totally, yes. Uh, you know what was the funnest part? Uh, when this project was born, th this is really a project that was born out of a coincidence. Uh, there's a journalist in an you know, online publication who found a t-shirt of the old days that was selling for a ridiculous amount of on eBay, like a couple hundred bucks. And he decided to track down who this Roberto Sank was because he was the name on the t-shirt, right? So he finds me and he goes to my bio, and in the bio it doesn't speak that much about fractals because I went on to paint on campus. So he contacts me, and he managed to revive his love for the fractals. 
So about a year ago, I started digging back into the factors and I could not find the files. The computer files have disappeared, which is very unlike myself. I'm pretty good at keeping all the junk I've ever collected. And yet the computer files for the factors are gone. So I'm stuck with only paper copies that were very, very high quality for the time, but they remain inject copies, you know, that are full of strikes when the inject printer goes by. In fact, if you go to my website, I have posted such a copy because it's a very interesting process. So I had to scan those copies and regenerate the fractal by correcting in Photoshop each defect of the print to try to make it the original fractal. And it was wonderful. Now, you just imagine, I went back in times 32 years. I was much younger then. And the energy of re-editing each pixel in my own work was such a rush, I cannot even explain. And then I went on to manipulate the colors. The entire trip has been fantastic, I have to say. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very different. I mean, like, everything that I, I have been looking at when it comes to the, the, the works that you've published, especially the one with the dragon tail, because, like, if you say, if you say this is just, like, computer-generated and you're just waiting for it, the dragon tail definitely, a uh, dragon tree, uh, my apologies. It actually just like stands out a little bit more because like it just feels like it's there's a certain flow, a little bit more flow into it, especially like you know like little little tails that are just coming out of it. That's and right. To know that it's just that it's a digital work with calculations. You know, it just feels like you you were at the, the start of how NFTs are being created back then because it's like you know. You don't know what's going to come out, especially with the codes that we're doing. And it's just really interesting that, you know, it connects really well with the landscape of the NFT ecosystem. It's just been amazing because I think right now, it, it, it was said that you were featured in one of the first few digital art exhibitions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How, how was the reception for that? It was terrific. I mean, uh, I was living in Miami, who uh, recently married and uh, expecting baby we were she was about to pop so we were very busy and yet we managed to paint a mural of a fractal uh four feet wide by six feet tall transposing pixel by pixel and we put that in a plane and i went to new york i mean now i'm in new york but back then it was the trip and uh we showed it at this computer exhibition where we were all kinds of media i mean the computer uh, artwork was dumped on all kinds of things. I have put it on a mural, but other fellows have put it on canvas, they have put it on computer printers themselves, whatever, all kinds of things. And it was in a beautiful space. And Ludwig Batatene, which was the visionary curator that put this together, did a terrific job. We would have good press coverage. It was great. I managed to, to score some space in Art Forum to promote the idea. And, uh, it was also very impressive. It, it was terrific. Awesome, awesome. So I mean, like, like you just now, you just did mention that you know it was a very exciting time when even you were trying to experiment with with fractal arts and digital art, especially. Uh, but like, you know, what, what, what was that turning point? You know, what was that turning point for you that you know, like, oh, I, I want to try something new, or I want to try to divert away from what I've been doing because like you know especially when it comes to traditional art you know it, it has a lot of practice you've taken a lot of time but like you know what made you want to explore something different it's a really nice question I appreciate the question uh, well after 30 some years of not playing around with the fractals I mean they were really back in the like they were in the past uh, and we are successful career as a painter uh, all of a sudden this love for the fractals was revived and all of a sudden, I started playing with the computer with the colors, and I just fell in love with the process. It was, I didn't have the pressure of an upcoming show with the painting, so I could actually slow down and take time off and just play around with the fractals, or play around with my own paintings and play with this idea of chromatic pulses. What really created the, the, the moment that you're describing or, or, or asking me about, uh, I remember the clearly where I was, and I realized that if I could put more chromatic pose, I was moving around the chromatic space around the paintings and changing the colors and making them negatives, and just, you know, fooling around with Photoshop. And uh, all of a sudden, I fall into the pattern that if I can animate these things into something that has a pulse about it, this could be truly beautiful. 
and I went deep into it. I mean, I, uh, I've been at it for some time, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a fantastic process. You really create uh, an animation that is uh, gripping. I mean, these this GIF files are, you know, never ending, and uh, the color palpitations or pulses or whatever you want to call them, they're really very engaging. I like them a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love the way that you do the animated color variations um, now with the, um, you know, with the NFTs and stuff because I find, you know, with the colors that have come in and fade, it highlights different parts of, of the fractals and it looks completely different from frame to frame, like with the different colors, which is a really cool effect, I think. That's right, that's yeah. right, thank you, yes. And, and I also resonate with the idea that, that the beginning, the work with the fractals, is very much in tune with the, the aesthetics of NFTs. I mean, it's it's the more uh, back when I started with this, the truth is I have no idea about NFTs. It's as simple as that. I was a painter, non connected with NFTs at the time, and uh, I had to find out from scratch. But the more I know, the more it's a, a perfect marriage. I mean, this is the medium I was waiting for. I, I remember talking to my son when he was little and, uh, and uh, explaining. And, with my wife, that I wanted a medium in which my paintings could be seen by the viewer in the same way that I see them when I paint them. That would be the idea, right? But yet, when you finish a painting, you take three steps back and you look at it, and all of a sudden there's all kinds of glare on the painting. I don't care how you illuminate it, it's just not what I was painting, it just isn't. It's very cool, I love my originals, but it's not what I'm painting. When I'm painting, I'm with the nose on the canvas. I'm very detail oriented, so I'm very close to so the color saturation and the, the overpowering saturation of the colors with lack of any kind of, of layer was always very appealing to me, but I didn't know how to convey that. If you make a copy of a painting, I mean, sure, you have the original, that's very nice, but only there's one original, and it'd be nice to spread the work around because I, I like that. But if you put them on paper, the paper is dull. It ages, not to mention. And then you put a glass on top of it, and then there's glare. So you really never get to see the painting the way I painted it. It's very nice, but it's not what I meant. However, in a computer screen, that's not the case. All of a sudden, you can have no glare. You can have vivid colors. The colors that are in the email that was sent around by you guys this week are exactly the ones that I painted, but absolutely exactly. I'm looking at my phone, and I'm seeing what I did in the big computer, and it's an exact copy. That had not happened until now. Us artists were stuck with mediocre copying systems. Very mediocre. I mean, most of this actually, I enjoy what I have done. But compared to this, that's nothing. This is a, is a, is a multiplying original uh, that, that can be transmitted forever without any variation of color in exactly the way the artist thought of it. I find that very powerful. Uh, anyway, and, and, and then minting the NFTs gives the artist the possibility of transmitting this as an original, and uh, with all the benefits that that has for both sides, it's just a perfect medium. It's a fantastic medium. So thanks for bringing that up. I always had a soft spot for that question. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Um, you know, I, I, I really, um, you know, resonate with what you said about, um, you know, your fractal art sort of having um, a style that's really compatible with the NFT space because, um, you know, I was reading up about how, you know, you, in your restoration of your original pieces, um, you're trying to preserve the pixelated look of the original fractals. Um, you know, I think it's like super cool that you went with that direction instead of staying true to the original, but also with the happy accident that, you know, pixel art is something that is quite popular now in the NFT space as well. It's um, a very evergreen kind of art style. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's a cool coincidence. Um, Absolutely, and, yeah. very cool coincidence. I enjoy, when I see that, I always, always I find it so cool. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think we we can share. Um, so on your on your origin on your website where you talk about your fractal art. Um, so you actually have some pictures on there. Um, of the original inkjet prints with like the lines on them. Um, yeah. and and then the restored version. Um, which is right below, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, very cool. It, there's, there's 41 fractals in the entire collection. 
Uh, about eight of them became my world fractals because they became uh, official t-shirts for one of the conventions between 92 and 94 when we did so many of them. Uh, but uh, then there were other fractals, up to 41 of them, that were the collection of Fractal Generation, which was the company that I invented to do this t-shirt thing. And, uh, and to this, the fractals. And uh, so there were 41 fractals that belong to the fractal generation. And that is why I want to turn into 1001 NFTs. Don't ask why 1001 is a very cool number, that's all. But uh, so I'm on to it. They're not finished, but uh, not even close. But I have a, a bunch of them and we'll publish them as we go along. And the idea is to have 1001. Mostly, perhaps, of the like, world ones. I don't know, but they're all very cool. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll play along with them. With the, the beautiful ones get published. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, you've got to curate it a bit. But yeah, no, looking at your Mac world and um, um, the T-shirts, they, they look super cool. Um, and I think it's awesome yeah. how, okay, you, you said you've been featured in Mac world 92, 93, 94. Um, Macworld in DC, um, the PC Expo in New York, and you also had some fractal um, fractal posters that were featured in Scientific American, and your T-shirts yeah. also in the MIT Museum catalog. So you know you were really like uh, a pioneer and really iconic in um, the field of fractal art. Were you like the first person to really um, you know go out there with a official collection? Uh, I have pictures of myself going uh, with a uh, eight by ten uh, inkjet print of a fractal framed in cardboard in cardboard uh, frames like they buy at uh, the art supply store. And to make all these prints and go to the art store museum, uh, at the museum art stores and university stores, to propose that they show them because they were so cool and they they were starting to become in vogue, but the, the term fractal art, I didn't know it, so I called it fractal art. Maybe other people were also calling it fractal art because it's all in place. So, but I was uh, one of the first ones, no question about it, because it was new at the time. It just couldn't be any other way. So uh, I certainly pushed it to, to limits. I mean, we, we went to uh, the Javits Center, to the fashion show, trying to find uh, a way of making the, the, the t-shirts a business that could actually, uh, you know, grow. And uh, then um, uh, we went to a, um, a show for colleges, college stores, international college stores in New Orleans. And uh, we linked with a bunch of universities, MIT, and uh, it was very cool. We were all over the place. And uh, it never became a money maker. But it was sustaining us so that we could do it, and that's all we wanted to do, really. And we put out the work for Fractal Art. That's no question about it. And then we were done, and that was cool, too. Uh, yeah. But it lasted a good two, three years, huh? yeah, at least. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's really cool because, you know, Fractal is fundamentally very mathematical, um, but also very tied to nature and, um, you know, going to all these like really academic settings and tech related settings. Um, I think it's an art style that is really, um, you know, that's that's your audience, right? That's where people have this fascination yeah. for for fractals. But um, I, um, I also read on your website that you did have a little fractal scandal. Um, yeah, you want to hear about it? Yes, I would love to hear about that. <laughs> yeah, that was an evening. That was an evening of a lifetime. That was that's good. Okay, so we go to the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics annual convention in Memphis, and uh, we are doing the official T-shirt. It says by me, and you know, a very nice T-shirt. And uh, all going good. We had a booth. You know, we're selling whatever we print up couple of thousand t-shirts, whatever, and uh, we're selling them, and everything was fine, except that the evening before the closing, there was the keynote speech, and Dr. Mandelbrot was going to be there, so you can imagine, it was a full house, right? So, uh, we attend, naturally, and Dr. Mandelbrot did his uh, speech, and it was very nice, and then Dr. Python, which is the other fellow that was his colleague in uh, he was a third man, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Dr. Whitehead, uh, 
co-wrote uh, the important book on fractals at the time, uh, with beautiful pictures and all that, who goes on a stage, and among the things he says, he goes to a point that says that actually, the fractal using the official t-shirt of this event is incorrect when it claims to be fractal art. There is no such a thing as fractal art. That fractal that we have in the t-shirt is identical to the fractal that we have in the book. And I go, holy mother, I was able to bite my tongue and I got up and I quietly went to the back of the room, went all around, and I went to the front of the room to, to where the stage is, so to wait for him until he would exit. And I, unbelievably quiet, I waited for him. He was very polite, very kind. And uh, we spoke for a few minutes, and I made my case, explaining that uh, Michelangelo had found an anatomist uh, who would have confronted. The dialogue could have been, for example, the anatomist saying, your drawings are anatomically correct, such as are mine, therefore yours are not art, they're just anatomical drawings. Well, that is what you're doing about my fractals. My fractals and your fractals may be a similar region of the mandible set, but you didn't manipulate your fractals so that the colors would bring beauty or interest or expression. You just wanted to show the complexity of fractals, which is mesmerizing in its own right. And I love your book, I own it as a matter of fact. But it's not an art book, it's a book on fractals which are wonderful to look at. It's like a book of coastlines. It's beautiful because you just can't help it, but it's not art. So he looks at me, ah, hmm, interesting. And we shook hands and everything very cool. He walks back into the stage and he takes it back. He says that he had met me and that he was now convinced that fractal art was a thing. Well, you can <laughs> I was in heaven, of course. And the next morning, there was the line out the door. We sold out all the tissues. It was a riot. It was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my little scandal. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Um, it was I, fun, yeah. yeah it was I really fun. love that you could, you know, um, get up and talk to him about, you know, what really differentiates it um, from, you know, just uh, being a scientific drawing or art. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, um, you know, again, I think you mentioned, you know, you, um, one of the defining differences for you was, um, you know, your use of colors and how that sort of brings out different qualities in the fractals and how it evokes different things. Um, and I noticed that this is a theme across all of your work, um, including, um, you know, your, um, the tulip, tulip paintings. Um, uh, yes, they, yes, yes. Yeah, they've got really uh, vivid colors as well. Thank and you, thank you, yes. Color is my, my, is what I do, yeah. Now you can imagine if what I do is truly color, which is true. I mean, I love form, no question about it. But color is what I do. Color is what makes me me. Imagine if I find a way to play only with color doing chromatic animations, and I spend all the time creating new and furious com compositions with color, one after the other. It's magnificent. This is like a, a kid in a toy store. Whereas in a painting, you have a conception, it takes you months or years to finish it. Uh, so the process is very low, slow, and I love it, it's what I do. But now it's like uh, on steroids with this, pro <laughs> with this chromatic pulse. It's, it's like uh, I'm playing with uh, the stuff of life, with color. And uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> I love my chromatic pulses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you, you were talking about the, the power you wanted to explore and especially the thing on, about like you know an artist on steroids because I think definitely you know a lot of people are saying that you know a lot is less so work you know I mean like that's what I'm quoting from quite a few people where you know it's it's easier work on 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 the computer or doing digital art but I think what you what you said about being like you know having the room to explore and really just like Going crazy with art is that one thing that I feel like digital art can actually help because the boundaries are lesser in a sense. But mm -hmm. create more concepts, you can actually go ahead and just like you know see the different colors that you really see as an artist and how you want to explore it. Because like of course when it comes to painting, you know like okay you have to mix this, mix that, and given the process of it, probably you know like 
tires you out just a bit because like you know you have to come up with these colors manually but now when that 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 obstacle is taken away you can just like really explore what you want to really convey and you, what you want to like you know communicate through your art which is amazing and i think as a digital artist myself you know it's just that it actually just has a confirmation in itself the saying that you know we have more room to just go crazy with this and i, I just really love what you said early on yeah i like i like the way you're explaining it it, 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 it is true i mean the the uh the discipline side of perfecting form, which I'm so fond of, and I spent so many hundreds of hours doing, and I love it, it's my life. But that is a necessary constraint on the child inside the artist. Whereas if you're let go with a computer, and there's no accounting, I mean, just beware, I'm loose. And I'm going to go for all the color, all of it now. From there, I mean, then I'm going to find the gems. Those will become paintings. So whoever says it's easier, it's uh, it's true and it's not. It is easier because we have access. It is easier to have the paints that we buy at the store than it was to make the paints that Rembrandt painted with that we had to grind from scratch. So it is easier. So computer is a lot easier. No question it's easier. Is it more valuable or less value? I think that about the same. Uh, about the same. Not, not in the sense of uh, whether an original piece will be worth the same. That is a, 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 a question I would prefer to avoid because there's so much at stake in the, in the answer, and I cannot possibly back up any answer without feeling funny about it. But the bottom line is that NFT, uh, which is an original, is an original work of art. And, and uh, the, the NFT that I make, which happens to be recurrent uh, GIF files, have a an, an expression in, in our lives that is different from any other thing. If I deliver to you an NFT, it's different than I deliver a painting or a uh, movie about the NFT. If I deliver a movie, the movie will end at some point. It will stop being a movie. If I deliver a painting, it will not move. I deliver these gift files, I accomplish something different. I don't know if everybody would like it. Some people would like it. I certainly do. But they do something different. Therefore, they are originals. And they are original. And I like them as work of art. So they're original works of art. How much are they worth? I have no idea. But uh, I like them a lot. I like doing them. I respect them when I like them. And I think they're a fantastic uh, medium for the artist. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, uh, you know, you obviously um, were quite excited to embrace um, digital art and try it out when the technology arose for it. Um, so, you know, I've got a question for you about, um, you know, the next sort of evolution of that that we're seeing now with NFT art and the art world in general, which is, um, you know, artificial intelligence, AI generated art, um, you know, a lot of pieces in the NFT um, ecosystem, a lot of collections are generative collections. Um, where they use computers to sort of come up with um, with different variations of in form and color as well. Um, one of the most simple ones that, you know, being the chromy squiggles, um, which I think is something, have you heard of that one? Uh, not in particular, but I'm familiar with the aesthetics, and if you want to comment on the aesthetics, I can only say good things. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, definitely, the, the aesthetics of, uh, of machine art are aesthetics of machine art and there is uh, some fabulous uh, work out there that you cannot draw away from. I mean, it's just mesmerizing, it's populating and, and making funny stuff that is just wonderful to look at. So if you don't want to look at it, you don't have to. I like looking at it and, and I find it artistic in the way it was conceived because it was conceived for the purpose of creating an aesthetic reaction, which it accomplishes. So is it the same as a Michelangelo? No, it's a different century. It has nothing to do with that. It's a different aesthetic. It's an aesthetic of our times. But if you look at all the all the NFTs, if the goofy and the, the not so goofy and the fantastic and the elaborate and the artistic, all of them will share one thing. They were not made 20 years ago. They were made now. This is a new aesthetic. And the aesthetic is consistent, it's valid, because it didn't exist before and because it attracts humans, that makes it valid. Uh, regardless of judgment, judgment is 
very aleatory and quite frankly it's very uh, one-sided many times. So the fact that it exists is new and it has a following makes it a valid form of art. Uh, is it like mine? No, I'm an old-fashioned guy. Uh, am I merging in? I'm certainly trying. I'm having a great time at it. But I find the aesthetic of, of, uh, of NFT is completely valid. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic thing to see. Yeah. Awesome. That's a great answer. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm always in support of anything that allows people to create with more ease and explore different ways of, you know, creating their art. Um, yeah, so, you know, aside from this current fractal um, collection, um, you know, and you have plans to release other works as well as NFTs, right? That is correct. I am planning two more collections. One is already being shown in my website, which is the chromatic variations on my paintings. And there's uh, like seven paintings or so that are shown, and there's a few uh, variations on each one, and I like them a lot. Now, that is one collection. I intend to make another 1,001, I don't know why, but 1,001 NFTs based on my earlier compositions and chromatic variations of those. That is collection number two. And then, there is collection number three that no one has heard about it. This is the first time I was public. Uh, if you go to my Instagram feed, you will see a lot of details of my last painting called the Tulip Orchid. The painting that took six years to make. And the detail is uh, intense. And um, what I'm doing is, because the detail is so intense, and because there's so much going on in this rather small painting, you know, it's barely a meter wide, it's not a big thing, or a mural or something. There's so much going on that I'm finding compositions within the composition that are worthy of themselves. Something that if I don't take a picture of right then and there, I'll never find again. An arrangement between a, a leaf and a metal and a petal that just happens if you frame it just so, it happens to be a composition. So, right. All right, so I went nuts with this idea and I figured I was going to make a thousand and one details. This was about two years ago. One thousand and one details of the tulip board. And I started doing them. I had more than half of them done. But imagine if I can also uh, print them as NFTs. Then, actually, we can <laughs> sell a piece of the painting in a digital space. I like it. <laughs> I'm going to explore it. It has not begun. It's an inception of an idea, but that will be the third collection. So first fractals, second the, the, the paintings, and third just the tulip orchid. That's what's in the horizon, yeah. Yeah, awesome. You know, I, I, you know, what I love about the way that you're approaching NFTs as an artist is that, you know, obviously you've been around for a long time. You know, your fractal art is iconic, um, you know, in, in that field, um, as well as, you know, your actual paintings, like, you know, your tulip orgy and that whole collection. Um, and I love that you're taking all of these, you know, vintage iconic pieces and sort of reimagining them and showing what you can really do and what more you can achieve using the technology. And you're really sort of leaning into, you know, how is an NFT or digital art different um, and what can you do with it? I think it's, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I tell you that the, the the comment that strikes me the most is when I hear, and I have heard it several times, that the animation or that the NFT is better than the original. What do you do with that? I spent months doing the original, and maybe they were two, and I came up with the NFT, whatever, number of hours, whatever. How, what do you do with that? And, and you hear it once and once again and again that the NFTs are better than the original. Now, what happens now to the value of art? The value of art is only the comparison among pieces. I mean, if too many people want the same piece, the price of art goes up. We get the piece in the museum, those are the ones that will run away in price, and one and locked in. That's what the value of art is. The ones that are cuter, the ones that are better executed, the ones that were more influential. If somebody says this is better than that, that's a categorical statement. What do you do when they tell you that the NFT is better than the original? A large original. An original took a long time. Original I love. And it is better. You hear it over and over. It's an interesting question about the value of an NFT. That's I don't know. I think 
you know, I think, you know, I, I think something else in, in the NFT world also is that, you know, pieces with some historical significance, um, you know, I don't think people obviously assess, you know, art based on, you know, whether they like it or not, um, like the aesthetics of it. But there also is are a lot of people who are looking for those iconic sort of vintage, something that, um, you know, they can collect for the significance of it. Um, and you know your pieces sort of do that. I know it's 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 pretty interesting that you're talking about you know when people say that the NFTs look better than the original. Um, yeah, I don't know. It it must be a bit of a you know bittersweet kind of thing for you, huh? Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. But it also puts value. Maybe maybe they're not. Well, we used to think they were. Maybe they're not. Maybe they have acquired a value of their own. Maybe it's time for pure artists to, to see the respect they really have. It, it deserves. And that's what NFTs are really about. That's the value of an NFT. It cements the actual value of the piece. You can compare it now, dollars to dollars, to other mediums, to reproductions on paper, to originals, to the works. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, you know, there is a lot. Um, that NFTs allow people to do. Um, what are the main things that sort of drew you to it? I know you, you talked about obviously having that digital art form and, um, you know, being able to disseminate it more widely so that everyone can enjoy your art. Um, but also, I think what I suspect a motivation for you also is, is that, um, you know, for the, your fractal collection, which is this iconic vintage collection, um, you said you've lost the original files. And now, you know, with NFTs, that's not something that can happen. So, you know, your your pieces will now be immortal on the blockchain uh, forever. Was that something that you had in mind? Oh, boy, you had to go there, then. <laughs> you really spoke in the stone moments of my subconscious when I'm going, this is not going to die. Bingo, you got it. Yes, it's about that. It's about that. An NFT is an immortal piece. It's a piece that exists. It has... It has been purchased by somebody. Therefore, it has a value which will be preserved, no matter how small it is, by the next recipient of that value. That NFT is available. Doesn't matter if somebody collects it or not, or it has a, a big value, it's around. Should it be discovered, which has the same chance than any other art form, should it be discovered, it will exist the way I thought of it and not in a horrible state of decomposition, which is what was going to happen to my paintings and everyone else, everybody else's paintings. So the NFT will remain itself forever. It will remain moving, in the case of mine, the gift files, forever. That is huge. Yeah. It's huge in the mind of the artist. The rest, the rest makes it possible and it's already cool, but that is huge. Yeah, yeah no, that is awesome. Um, you know, I just, you know, one thing I really love about, you know, your collection, what you're doing and your progress is I see that, you know, like, you know, you were one of the first to embrace the digital art form with, you know, a type of art, fractal art that is, um, you know, fundamentally, um, you know, it's it's very digital. It's almost like dependent on digital to create these like super complex repetitions into patterns. Um, and, you know, I feel like you've, you've sort of, always try to be on the forefront of any sort of technological advancement um, with your art and your fractal pieces now becoming NFTs is just the next step in that. You know, I think that is very cool um, as an artist and especially as an um, artist who's been around for a while. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, one tries. Yeah. Uh, I have always enjoyed technology. I've always been technologically happy yeah. uh, and uh, playing with, and not to, I mean, for many decades, I have only produced uh, conventional art, you know, or on canvas, but uh, I have always played around with technology anyway. Yeah. It's, it's very cool to say. Yeah, so, you guys are young. So, so what, um, is there anything else that you're looking at exploring? Like, what's, what's next for you, or? Uh, I try to keep my cup rather empty and not make many plans. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, tomorrow is another day. I will probably enjoy it too, as long as I don't have any reason not to. And uh, 
the general plan is to continue painting, continue doing the NFTs, um, making them well known. Uh, hopefully, everything is fantastic, and that's all. Uh, I don't, I don't make uh, long-term plans about the direction of the work or of my life. I, 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 it's okay. It's okay, the time is really cool. <laughs> Yeah, you go with the flow. Um, you just put in your intentions, and then you wait 12 to 48 hours to see what comes out, pretty right? Much, yeah, pretty, pretty much, pretty much. You got it, you got it. You get surprised and you go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> mm, all right. So, um, yeah, I think at this point, um, we've got uh, about 10 minutes left into the hour. Um, okay. So if anyone would like to ask some questions or if there's anything you'd like to say, um, you know, please request to speak. Um, in the meantime, um, you know, I'm going to ask you, Roberto, a little bit about, you know, how did this all start? Um, you know, not just your NF, not the NFTs, not fractals, but you as an artist, right? Um, when did you, when did you really begin your journey? Okay, so it's a nice question indeed. Thank you. Uh, I painted. I was, uh, I, my, the oldest painting I own is when I was 14 years old. I was never a doodler, uh, not a child prodigy, not even close. I mean, I was a normal person, you know. At 14, I made a painting. I liked it. I started drawing some more. Left it aside, went to architecture school. Whatever I drew was good, but, you know, no particularly rabbit about it. Uh, it became very interesting, in incredible details in drawings. Nice, but, you know, Nothing important, really. Then, all of a sudden, I came to the States. I played around. Oh, well, I had a, a, I had a photo lab. I so was in photography as well. This is before I came to the United States. Photography, drawing, architecture, those are my things. My grandmother was a painter. That's all very good. But it really never fell in place until I was here. When I was in the States, a few years into it, and making a living in diverse business activities, and, uh, but uh, I started growing more attached to drawing, spending time drawing and painting. And it was all about drawing and painting all of a sudden. I don't know where it came from, but it was all about drawing and painting. And I just started doing it on the side, never made a living at it. Uh, okay, one day, and this is the, the catalytic moment, one day um, I get a, a painting to be shown at a gallery in Miami Beach, at the Galaxy Gallery. and. Uh, I was asking for a few hundred dollars, nothing major, uh, but a decent sized piece, and uh, they had a nice show and everything very well. And I get a phone call at my place of business, I own a company there, and uh, I get a phone call from the gallery owner saying that a person uh, had offered for my painting one third of the prices I was asking. So imagine if I was asking, I don't know, one third of the price, which was not too much. And I didn't need the money at the time. I was doing okay, but I felt a rush. I figured in my mind, if this is true that somebody can give me money for my painting, this can be duplicated. Take it. I took the money, and from then on, it became an absolute obsession. I had to be able to turn my life around and become a professional artist. And it took about a couple of years. And the first project that saw the light of day was selling my fractals. That was the very first commercial project when I became an actual professional painter that was doing nothing else but painting or fractals or stuff like that. That was a moment, yeah. Yeah, amazing. How's that? <laughs> I, I'm just lost for words because I, I think a lot of the things it's just like it's very relatable right now in this this landscape uh, and whatever the NFT world, or actually in the art world, especially when it comes to digital art as well, because like I just feel like you know, like that's the one thing that could really inspire a lot of the artists out there, like you know, uh, exploring and just like re revisiting some of the ideas that you had before. Because like I think one thing that some 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 artists that we've we've come across is just that you know that sense of like you know. That this fear for some reason when it comes to just like you know really exploring because you know I've known this for all my life blah 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 and then after they come to just you know trying to explore different mediums and just like 
branching out to different kind of things. It's, it's just something that, you know, a lot of us lack as artists at all because we're just too afraid. But like you coming in, you know, exploring whether it's going to be the first ever uh, digital art pieces and, you know, we've met, met, met involved as well because I can't just imagine how, how tough that would be. But yeah, like this piece just really, just like really highlights, you know, the importance of just having that inner child as an artist, you know, like the what you said, the child inside the artist is very important. So that's something that we will definitely take take away from this. And yeah, I'm really, really glad that you are in this space because I, I do hope that you would have that same rush and that same obsession with the NFT space moving forward because, you know, we, we do have that euphoria, you know, when, when we first mint and then after that sell our our part, uh, uh, our art pieces on this, on, on this space. So I really do hope that you have that sense again, you know, reliving that like the, the happiness that you actually experienced back decades, decades ago. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. I'm really looking forward to, to the future now. Yeah. Uh, this is a great space, absolutely. Hi. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Absolutely, my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Roberto. Um, yeah, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, that concludes our space. Um, unfortunately, the space was not automatically recorded by Twitter, but um, we've recorded it separately, and we'll be putting it up. Um, we'll be uploading it so that um, you know it can be continued to be shared around and anyone who missed um, this amazing conversation with an iconic artist um, can come back to it later so yeah thank you all for coming thank you so much Robert for um, you know doing what you do and for being here today and happy birthday um, yeah thank you thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much everybody <laughs> it is a celebration for you know, getting to know you and of course and I happy birthday to you as well. But like, what, what last note? Like, like, is there anything that you you wanna like, you know, advise any artists out there? Like, what would be the thing that you would wanna advise us? Go for it. If you really love it, go for it. If you stop doing it, that's fine. Otherwise, just go for it. It doesn't matter whether it sells or not. It doesn't matter at all. Once you finished it, you're done with it. If it sells. Great, no kidding. But if not, take your time and do it. As long as it feels great, it's all that counts. That's that's, uh, that's my piece. That's great advice. That game. That game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. That's really really amazing. And yeah, we will try to, to just really go for it. And I think that is an amazing advice. So thank you so much, Roberto, for you know giving us a lot of like no, your knowledge and your experience and then after giving us that encouragement as well thank so, you you're welcome absolutely you guys are great all right, all right. good night everybody good, good night everybody and thank you very very much for attending good night everybody and for hosting you guys were wonderful thank you again thank you happy birthday thank you bye bye <laughs> thank you <laughs>